But I want to jump into the presentation itself. I want to talk about how manufacturing environments are complex and dynamic. And we're going to break down that term because those words complex and dynamic get thrown around a lot. I want to break that down to talk about what it means and how advanced production scheduling addresses both aspects of it. And that will take us to the advanced scheduling solution. We're going to talk about advanced scheduling solutions in general, and also we're going to touch on Preactor, which is Siemens' specific offering to address the need for advanced scheduling. Then we'll talk about advanced scheduling deployment, as in what's involved if and when a company chooses to go ahead with implementing the solution, and then we'll have a brief discussion. So let's begin talking about how manufacturing environments are complex and dynamic. Production environments are inherently complex, and they must dynamically respond to internal and external contingencies. So from the standpoint of a production controller who has a set of orders for a set of products that need to be sequenced and scheduled to run through a production facility, Right away, there's just inherent complexity in that. As the description implies, there's multiple products. There's generally multiple possible routings per product. And unless there is an assembly line situation where everything is perfectly synced up, the various workstations are going to have varying cycle times the materials may have specific curing times that they must wait after one operation but before the next. But they also have expiry times in many cases, meaning there's a time limit beyond which they can't wait. And we particularly see this in the food industry, but it applies to many other industries and many other types of material processing. And then, of course, there are varying setups and teardowns and cleanouts that require different times, different personnel, uh, different workstations. So a production controller who's asked to put together a feasible schedule would face a certain degree of inherent complexity. But wait, there's more. Because it's a dynamic environment with external contingencies. Things outside of the facility are going to change. There's going to be, over time, changing product mix as new products are introduced, some are discontinued, and also changing product volume demand. The specific types of orders that one sees early in the year might change late in the year or even in the next month. So a schedule that is very feasible and more or less in equilibrium for the month of June can't simply be repeated for the month of July. In addition, there can be rush orders after a schedule is published to the floor, a change from the outside can cause an order to become a rush order to push to the front of the line. And there may also be material shortages. Certain things that were at the front of the line or at the middle must be delayed as material, as, as the plant waits for material to arrive from an upstream supplier. So these are all external contingencies external dynamism, which impacts the complexity, the inherent complexity of creating a production schedule. And then there are internal contingencies. And these are within the facility, but not necessarily within the facility's control. There are unexpected equipment breakdowns that can push back portions of production schedules. You may have lean or absent staff. By lean staff, we mean that the staff has been sized such that under certain circumstances, 
everyone, every operator is working, and no operators are not working. Well, that might be fine under certain circumstances, but a contingency such as a rush order could change the need for specific specialists, members of the workforce. And then from time to time, staff is absent. That lean level that we've become accustomed to becomes even leaner when someone calls in sick. You may have other issues to deal with, such as scrap and rework, meaning that an order has to be fully or partially re-injected into the system. So let's talk about the advanced scheduling solution that can be applied to address these issues. And we can talk in, sort, in somewhat generic terms because all advanced scheduling solutions accomplish or purport to accomplish a certain set of things. So we can look at that in general before drilling down to Siemens specific solution. At the heart of a advanced production scheduling solution, we're going to address the inherent complexity, the external contingencies and the internal contingencies with a scheduling engine. And one of the very first things that we do in an implementation is we, as an implementation team, get a set of routings for products that the facility produces. We get a representative set of orders for a given time frame. And we schedule those through the software product. The scheduling engine produces, one hopes, a feasible schedule. And once we have that, we say, oh, well, we've got some grasp of the inherent complexity. But of course, we're nowhere near done. Because what we need to do is we need to integrate with that ERP system. And we need to not only realize that the representative set of orders, however representative it might be, is going to change over time. And let me uh, bring up a pointer here. So again, we are going to have order amendments or rush orders that come into the system. We may have difficulties with material availability. So as those contingencies make themselves known, a proper scheduling engine is going to account for them. And in so doing, we account for these external contingencies. Now, there can be, of course, the unexpected. We must expect the unexpected from the scheduling floor. And that's going to come back to us typically through the manufacturing execution system. There may be breakdowns on the shop floor. Orders may progress as planned. They may run to completion, but with an unexpectedly low yield. Uh, there could be scrap. There could be rework. Again, that information can feed back to the scheduling engine. These internal contingencies can be accounted for. And any advanced production scheduling system will or will purport to allow a production control team to respond to these various changes. Now, the good news is, the bright spot is, that although we have a, a very complicated picture, we really do have a single and strong point of leverage. Okay, we really have a place where all of this pulls together. It pulls together with the production control team. It pulls together with the scheduling engine so that we can have a point at which, first of all, there's visibility. There's, there's visibility to what's going on both within and without the facility. And there's a decision support tool to say, OK, given that the unexpected, which we expected, has occurred, now what do we do? There were things that were outside of our control, such as the order amendments. But this 
is the zone of our control, okay, what can we do in order to respond? Somatic IT pre-actor advanced production scheduling is, is the solution that Siemens offers, or rather the family of solutions. And what it can do is it can store defined sets of shop resources and product routings in order to, again, address inherent complexities, import orders and order changes, reflect shop floor status in order to deal with external and internal complexities, help the production controller build a schedule, both as a calculation tool and as a decision support tool, and finally, it can publish that finished schedule. The finished schedule may take a number of forms. It can take the form of a Gantt chart. It can take the form of reports that are issued as work instructions to the various operators or to their supervisors. Uh, it can also feed electronically to an internal website and or directly to the manufacturing execution system so that those uh, instructions show up at the specific workstation right in front of the operator where it's needed. I want to, by the way, I want to make a distinction between Preactor as a calculation tool and as a decision support tool. Preactor can, a, in its role as a calculation tool, can again take a large number of resources, routings, orders, and produce a feasible schedule. This is something that a human can do where the time is available. This, this is something that can be done on an Excel spreadsheet. This is something that can be done on a whiteboard. So what we're doing is we're accelerating the process of generating that feasible schedule. And we're not trying to replace the production controller because we always want the production controller to review the schedule before it's released to the floor to, so the production controller can see potentially opportunities for efficiency that might not have been evident to the scheduling engine. Or even if there aren't any, the uh, production controller can see where opportunities are and say, hmm, you know, we do have, we, we have a period of time where this particular machine is idle. Hmm, maybe this is a good, uh, this is a good time frame in which we can build a stock. Uh, if we have some materials that we like to build a stock to keep them handy, I can see that opportunity. I can pass that up the chain and say, hey, Maybe you want to put that build a stock order in the system right now. So we really want the production controller not to be replaced, but to at be assisted in the task of calculating the schedule. And then also, we say it's a decision support tool. Uh, often when a rush order comes in, there are going to be decisions to make. You know, gee, do we have, if someone else's order has to get bumped in order to make way for the rush order, who, which order should that be? And that's a decision that really is best left to a human being. So it's a calculation tool. It's a decision support tool. It's not something to replace a protection control team, but to, something to help them do their jobs faster and better. What I want to do now is talk about how advanced scheduling deployment takes place, give you an overview of the steps. What we have to do as an implementation team and what a customer has to do is think in terms of not just the pre-actor scheduling engine, but the system surrounding it. And for each of these, there's going to be a number of steps, analysis and design, where we undertake discovery of the broader system, both the current state and the desired future state. From there, we perform functional and technical analysis 
and perform a system design or create a system design. And just in case there's any ambiguity, all of these steps apply all the way through. So we need to do discovery from top to bottom, analysis and design from top to bottom. I think I'll leave my pointer right here. Then the next step is to build, and this is always an iterative process in which the deployment team implements the deployment team implements the schedule. Pardon me. It, 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 it implements the model, and uh, with the aid of the IT team on the customer side, implements the feeds to and from the ERP and the MES system. And there's going to be testing on the customer side. The customer is going to look at the schedules produced and say, oh, okay, well, here's what it got right, and here's what it didn't get right yet. So then we go through another iteration of building and testing. And depending on the complexity of the deployment, we can usually we can do a pretty good job of anticipating uh, the number of iterations and the time span of the iterations when we're putting together a project. And then uh, on schedule, it's time to launch to install Preactor clients and servers. Uh, as a matter of fact, there is going to be overlap between this phase and this phase. We're going to be doing installation. And then as we get close to launch, we do the final configuration, activate the data feeds, and then perform a cutover. And cutover from the old system to the new is something we want to plan for carefully. We want to not just prepare the production control team, but also prepare the operators and the supervisors so that they understand what's going on upstream. If they see things that are slightly different than they expect, they'll know, they'll, they'll understand why, and they can be true participants in the overall process improvement. 